Let's go to, I'm going to continue on the gospel, but we're going to do it in another light. We're going to look at this Jesus, this Jesus of the gospel. If you listen to the program this morning, I talked about Jesus and where he was, and we're going to continue with that. If you will turn with me to Revelations 13, and I'm going to read verse 8. It says, all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of the Lamb, of the Lamb, the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the earth. Jesus had a plan. Jesus and the Father had a plan before the earth was even created. And we're going to take a look at that plan. If you will go with me to John 1, verse 1, in the beginning was the Word was the Word. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Amen. Ask any child, and they'll tell you, well, that means there's two. That means there's two. It says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So there were two. Amen. It says, the same was in the beginning with God. The Word was with God. All things were made by him. By who? By the word. By the God that was the word. It says all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. Anything that was made was made by the word. And if you read Genesis 1, it says that the spirit moved on the face of the waters and God spoke. What did he speak? He spoke word. And light came. It said, all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life. In him was life. In who? In the God that was the word. That's where life was. It says, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. Now go down to verse 14. And the word, that God, that was the word, that light, that is the life. That God that created everything, everything that was made was made by the Word. Amen. That God, the Word, it says in verse 14, and the Word was made flesh. Was Amen. made flesh. Now, how was that Word made flesh? How was that Word that was a God made flesh? Turn with me to Hebrews 10, verse 5. Amen. This is Paul. Oh, this is the writer of Hebrews speaking. He said in verse five, "Whereof when he cometh into the world, and that's the word Jesus. Therefore, when Jesus cometh into the world, he saith, sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body, a body hast thou prepared me. Amen. A body hast thou prepared me. So the word that was God, that was with God, needed a body." He needed a body. That's how he came into the world. How is he going to come into the world? He was going to come in a body. Amen. And the father had a body prepared for him. Had a body prepared for him. It says, verse 5, But a body hast thou prepared me. In burnt offerings and sacrifices Amen. for sins, thou hast no pleasure. Then said I, lo, I come. In the volume of the book, it is written of me to do thy will, O God. So how did he come to earth? He came in a body. Now where did he get that body? Where did he get that body? Turn with me to Luke 1, verse 26. We're going to see where the word that was God got a body. He needed a body to come into the world. It says, verse 26 of Luke 1. And then the sixth month, the angel, the angel Gabriel, was sent from God into a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin, espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came into her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, when she saw the angel, she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb. Thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. Thou shalt conceive in thy 
my womb. You know what? This conception was like all conception. It had an egg. And if you don't believe that, if you go up a little bit further in verse 24 in Luke 1, it says, and after these days, his wife Elizabeth conceived. Same word as when Mary conceived. There has an egg and it had to be conceived. And it says, back down here, it says, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and thou shalt bring forth a son. A son. Mary wasn't going to be a host, and she wasn't going to, she, she wasn't going to be a surrogate. She was going to have a son. Do you see? That egg was hers. Amen. The egg was hers. If she didn't have, if it wasn't going to be her egg, then she wasn't going to have a son. But here, she was going to have a son. So it was her egg. It was her egg, and that egg had to be conceived. And I was telling Doyle tonight, the word conceived actually means to seize, to seize. Right. It says, all right, so thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, and thou shalt be called Jesus. Shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Well, how in the world is he going to give him the throne of his father, David, if he wasn't born in David's lineage? If he wasn't born in David's lineage, he had to have a lineage if he was going to have, if he was going to be, if his, if his father was going to be David, if he was going to have David in his background, how was he going to do that? He was going to have to have he was going to have to have that body, and that body was going to have to have a human, and it was Mary. He got his body from Mary. Amen. He got his body from Mary. Mary conceived, and she had a son, and guess who was in Mary's background? David. Mary was of the house and lineage of David. Mary supplied Jesus with a body. She supplied Jesus with a body. He had to have a body. It said the father had a body prepared for him. So let's take a look at this. He shall reign, verse 33, he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom. There shall be no end. And then Mary said unto the angel, how shall this be? No, seeing I know not a man. And the angel answered her and said, the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee. And Matthew says she conceived by the Holy Ghost. It says, and the angel answered and said unto her, the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also, that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. So Mary supplied the body. She had the egg. It was her son. But who was the father? The father in heaven. And what came into that egg? What came into that egg when she conceived it? The Spirit of Jesus. The spirit of Jesus, the word came into that egg. Now, how did that word come into that egg? And before we go on, I want you to consider this. The egg, the egg, conceived egg, Mary's egg, conceived, now becoming an embryo. It started with one cell. It started with one cell, and then just like any human being starts, it starts with one cell, and then that cell divides into two, and then four, and 16. And you know what was in that cell when that conception took place? The Spirit of Jesus. Amen. The Spirit of Jesus, the Word. Amen. The Word became flesh. The Word get it, got into that cell, and that, that got conceived with Mary. And that egg became a cell, and that egg started to split. And in that egg, that tiny little teeny weeny egg, became the spirit of Jesus. The okay. God that was in heaven with God, the word that was in heaven, that created everything we know that's been created, went into a cell, went into an egg, and it divided. And there was Jesus in Mary. Now, how did that happen? Go with me to... Uh, Hebrews 2. Amen. We're going to look at verse 16. It says, For verily Jesus took on not him the nature of angels, but he took on him. Look at this. He took on him. You know, we take on clothes. Jesus took on him the seed of Abraham. He took on the seed of Abraham. He, that egg was um, what do we call it? Conceived. And that spirit of Jesus went into that egg because that egg was going to become a body. 
And it says he took on him the seed of Abraham. He didn't become an angel. You know what happened? You know what the difference between angels and humans are? That angels don't die. It says they are stronger and mightier than humans and they don't die. But guess what? A human dies. A human will die. And Jesus took on the seed of Abraham. He took on a man's body. That right. word that was God That's took on God. a man's body. Took on a man's body. Now let's continue. It says 17, where in all things it behooved him, all things, in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brother, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God to make reconciliation for the sins of that people. But look, it says in all things it behooved him. He thought it necessary to be likened to his brethren. If you look this up in the NIV, the New, uh, the New International, it says he became fully human, fully human in every way, every way. Jesus became fully human in every way. How can a God that is the Word of God that created everything that we know was created, how in the world was it going to take on the seed of Abraham? How was it going to become fully human? Turn with me to Philippians 2, and we're going to find out how this God that was the Word became fully human. How did he become fully human? Philippians verse, uh, chapter 2, verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So this is how the God that was the word thought. Amen. This is how he worked. He said, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Who, being in the form of God, Jesus was God and he was with God. There were two gods. If you heard my uh, ministering this morning, it says in Genesis that the word God is plural. He said, let us make man in our image. There were two. Even in Genesis, there were two gods. But there's not two gods now. It says, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. But, my God, but, but, yes, I like that word, made himself of no reputation and took on him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. Amen. The NIV says he made himself nothing. He made himself nothing. Then you look up it up in Strong's, it says he emptied himself. Oh. He emptied himself, the God the God that was the word that created everything became nothing. And he emptied himself of all his godly Amen. ability. He no longer could know everything. He no longer could be everywhere. And he no longer could create. He emptied himself of it. Emptied himself of it. He couldn't do anything. And then he took his spirit and he went in to that conceived egg. And that, and that egg became a human. And Jesus became every bit like us. He Amen. became a human with God. no godly ability. None. Why? Why did Jesus become a human just like us? So he could reconcile us back to the Father. Amen. We will see later, but we have to understand Jesus, who was God, emptied himself of all his godly abilities and went into an egg, went into that body prepared for him. Mary supplied the body, and that body became his, and Jesus became a man, just like you and I, for us, for us. And we will see how he does it later on. 